told you of propeller planes, but what about jet age aircraft capable of flying above any interference created by an oceanic phenomenon? Two KC-135 Stratotankers took off from Homestead Air Force Base on August 28, 1963. These were the first two jet aircraft to add their names to the ambiguous chronicle of the Devil's Triangle. Their fate was still unperceived as each taxi to take off into the unknown, leaving the humid atmosphere of Florida's late summer behind. Eleven crewmen were aboard the two planes. Their destination when they lifted into the sky was secret. The last position they radioed was 300 miles southwest of Bermuda. Then they vanished. In 1881, when the American schooner Ellen Austin sailed into port, half her crew was missing, the result of an eerie experience that occurred in the Devil's Triangle. According to her log, she had encountered an abandoned schooner aboard which everything appeared shipshape, sails furled, rigging intact, lines properly coiled, no loose gear strewn about, Nothing unusual below decks, no water in the bilges. In fact, the schooner seemed most seaworthy. A prize crew seeking salvage was placed aboard the deserted vessel. However, before the two sailing craft could get underway, they were separated by a squall. After the seas had subsided, it took two days before the Ellen Austin again made contact with the mysterious schooner, but the crew had vanished. After what must have been a considerable amount of persuasion, a second salvage crew was placed aboard the strange schooner. But again, before the two sailing craft could set sail, a second storm moved in. When the tempest had passed, the enigmatic schooner was nowhere to be seen. The phantom-like ship and half the crew were never seen again. Seventy years before Francis Chichester was knighted by the Queen of England for sailing around the world alone, a retired American sea captain, Joshua Slocum, on June 27, 1898, completed the first solo circumnavigation in a 37-foot yawl, the Spray. Eleven years later, in 1909, Slocum commenced a second single-handed voyage around the world. On November 14th, after departing Miami, where he took on additional provisions, Joshua Slocum sailed the spray out into the Devil's Triangle and disappeared forever. The most famous ships of the United States Navy were assembled in one fleet. Near the head of that flotilla would be the USS Langley, the United States' first aircraft carrier to be lost in World War II. These men knew her well for they saw her many times before she was converted from the Collier Jupiter to the Langley. They served on her sister ship, which except for a strange twist of fate, might have become history's first aircraft carrier. Their ship was the USS Cyclops. Just as tankers deliver fuel oil to ships of the modern Navy, the Colliers supplied coal to the Navy's coal-burning ships. The Cyclops was under the command of Lieutenant Commander George W. Worley, who was her captain since she was built in 1910. On January 8, 1918, at Norfolk, Virginia, the Cyclops was loaded to her waterline with a cargo destined for a fleet of U.S. warships serving off the east coast of South America. This picture was taken on the Cyclops' departure day by a dashing young Navy officer 
Conrad A. Nervig. Now, over half a century later, Conrad Nervig tells his story. I first met Captain Worley on board the Cyclops and I reported to him in, la in the last, last part of uh, November 1917. Then the ship sailed in the first few days of 1918. From then on, I saw him every day. He seemed a nice gentleman, but it was only later that I discovered his peculiarities. One incident in particular was when I was assigned to the 12 to 4 watch, from midnight until 4 o'clock in the morning. And on that occasion, he came up the ladder from his sea cabin below the bridge, carrying a cane, wearing a derby hat, and dressed in long underwear. Captain Rowley was a gruff, eccentric salt of the old school, given to carrying a cane, but possessing few other qualities. He was a very indifferent seaman and a poor, overly cautious navigator, generally disliked by both his officers and his men. Cyclops sailed through the Devil's Triangle on her voyage south, but not without incident. So many untoward things happened to this Cyclops on her trip to South America. First, in leaving the harbor at Norfolk, she almost had a collision with the USS Survey. Then Lieutenant Forbes, the executive officer, was placed under arrest in his room. The third was one of the engines broke down, had to finish the trip on one engine. She sailed past the port of Rio, and only daylight saved her from going up on the rocks. Then there was a poor seaman that was drowned after being hit by the propeller. And then she scraped the cruiser Raleigh after coaling her, causing some damage. And all of this I attribute to to uh, Worley's poor, his poor navigation and his poor seamanship. Could these incidents have been an omen of things yet to come? For the Cyclops would once again enter the Devil's Triangle on her voyage home. But this time, the Cyclops reached her destination, Rio de Janeiro. On February 21st, 1918, Ensign Nervig was transferred to a supply ship, the USS Glacier. That same day, the Cyclops was ordered to depart Rio for Baltimore. Minutes before the Cyclops was due to sail, her supply officer, Ensign Page, visited Nervig aboard the glacier. He grasped my hand in both of his and said very solemnly, well, goodbye, old man, and God bless you. I was deeply impressed with this finality, which was truly prophetic and its implication. A plaque at the State Department in Washington is dedicated to United States diplomats who lost their lives under heroic or tragic circumstances. One of the names reads, Alfred L. M. Gottschalk, lost at sea, 1918. After a tour of duty as Consul General to Brazil, Ambassador Gottschalk boarded the Cyclops that 22nd day of February, 1918, as one of 48 passengers. Among the other 47 passengers were a contingent of court-martialed military prisoners being transferred to the naval prison at Portsmouth, New Hampshire. They included, among others, three Navy seamen sentenced to 15 to 90 years 
for the murder of a shipmate aboard the USS Pittsburgh. Lieutenant Forbes was still under arrest. When I saw the Cyclops stand out to sea, I had a feeling of relief that I was not on her. How the crew felt, I'm sure that they would have been glad to be in my place, the shore. What made this man tick? Was he really a tyrannical master of his ship? Could the thought of serving in a navy that was at war with his German fatherland have done something to George W. Worley, whose real name was Johann Friedrich Wichtmann. Although she had more than enough fuel and stores to reach her destination, the Cyclops failed to proceed directly to Baltimore as ordered. On Sunday, March 3rd, 1918, the residents of Barbados, the easternmost island of the West Indies, sighted a strange-looking ship entering Carlisle Bay at Bridgetown. It was the Cyclops. Brockholtz Livingston, the U.S. consul at Barbados, boarded the vessel and learned that the Cyclops had been running at reduced speed due to engine trouble, and that there had been disturbances at sea when some of the Cyclops' crew conspired with the prisoners, after which they were also confined. And one was apparently executed. The first Navy shipboard hanging since 1849. A cable to this effect was sent by Mr. Livingston to the State Department. The next afternoon, the Cyclops weighed anchor for the last time and put out to sea. But to the astonishment of those who watched from shore, the big ship did not turn north towards the United States. She headed south and steamed away from her destination and disappeared over the horizon. Captain Worley, his crew, his passengers, his ship, and the prisoners of the Cyclops were never seen again. They had once more entered the Devil's Triangle. An investigation of German naval archives after World War I disclosed that no German U-boats, warships, or mines were in or near the Devil's Triangle at the time the Cyclops disappeared. However, far up in the North Atlantic, a British ship was sunk with all hands. Her name, Cyclops. But there is yet another chapter in the story of the USS Cyclops. It took place at St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands many years later. Two of the Cyclops sister ships, the Nereus and the Proteus, were sold to a private shipping company in 1940. They left St. Thomas in the fall of 1941 for Norfolk, Virginia. Both ships vanished without a trace in the Devil's Triangle. 